All right, it's 4.30, so we're gonna get kind of a slow rolling start uh, so that uh, we can allow some other folks to join as, um, as sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to get, get through on Zoom. Um, but wanted to welcome everyone to the 12th annual Alaska Ocean Leadership Awards. Uh, my name is Tara Reamer. I'm the president and CEO of the Alaska Sea Life Center. Um, and as I said, we're not going to kick off too quickly because I know we've got some people in the waiting room that uh, Joanna is working on getting um, entered into the, the Zoom. Uh, so those of you who are with your cameras on um, and would like to celebrate when we get to that point with winners, um, the official Zoom clap is kind of like this. So um, just everyone try it. We're just going to practice. Okay, everyone try. Excellent. Okay, so it's it's optional. It's totally optional if you want when we get to that point. But you, um, it will be uh, great to be able to celebrate since we can't all be in the same room. And I do see that we're still getting people um, coming into the waiting room. So we'll 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 hold off a little bit. Um, we do have. Um, Oops. Sorry, Chair, I muted you. <laughs> I mean to. Okay, I'm off mute now, I think. All right, well, it looks like the waiting room's empty. I'm sure there'll be a few people coming in, but uh, just uh, get, get started now. It's a couple minutes after 4.30. So again, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Tara Reamer. I'm the president and CEO of the Alaska Sea Life Center, and I want to welcome you to the 2021 Alaska Ocean Leadership Awards. So this is our 12th year for doing these awards and our first year on Zoom. Um, most typically, we do these awards at the Alaska Marine Gala uh, in February, but this year we weren't able to do that event, and so uh, that was an all-virtual program. Um, and we didn't want to uh, have it too long, so we decided we'd be best to have two different virtual programs. So one perk of having a virtual program is that the virtual technology allows us to show off quite a bit of the Alaska Sea Life Center we wouldn't otherwise. So we do have a little treat for you. Uh, in addition to our action-packed award agenda, we have some action from the Stellar Sea Lion Habitat we're going to introduce you to our largest uh, resident of the Alaska Sea Life Center pilot, the Stellar Sea Lion. Um, and our mammologist, Cassidy Kelly, is going to feed pilot um, and do some training and talk to you a little bit about him uh, to kick off. This way, people that are still entering the award, that were coming in, won't miss any of the awards and you'll get a little treat up front. So take it away, Cassidy. Good boy. Good job, bud. Good. 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 Good job, bud. Open. Good. Right now we're just doing some husbandry behavior, kind of checking out Pilot's body, making sure everything's looking good this evening here in Seward. The boy. Good bark. Sounding good, bud. Pilot currently weighs about 1,700 pounds. He will get over 2,000 pounds this summer. He's going to start bulking up here really soon. Good boy. Let's see if we can get that body up and out of the water. Good free. Good. Still a very active guy, despite that weight. Nice job, buddy. We can kind of use exercise behaviors like breach to make sure that pilot's looking good, too, and 
he's getting that daily exercise that he needs as well. Oh boy. Go. Nice job, buddy. This guy is 11 years old and he is about full size. We'll probably see him gain a couple more hundred pounds over the summers through his lifetime. Stellar sea lion males can get up to 2,500 pounds. Good. Flip. Good. Looking good, bud. Good, back. Good. Good job, Kai. Good catch, buddy. Get that one. Oh. <laughs> good boy, bye. Good, friend, go! Good! Nice job, buddy. Yeah, he's a good catcher, too. <laughs> good boy, Pilot. So right now, Pilot's eating about 55 pounds of food a day. He eats a mixture of herring, caitlin, pollock, and his favorite is salmon. Oh boy. Good island. Good. So when I'm training pilot, I'm using positive reinforcement. And basically what that means is when he does something correct, I give him some fish for it. And you might hear me saying good. And that is to bridge the gap between the correct behavior that he just did and the reinforcement that is about to come. Nice job, bud. Good, open. Those nice chompers. So most marine mammals actually don't chew their food. Open, bud. Good, they swallow it whole. So you can see Pilot swallowing that fish whole. And he uses those teeth to rip larger items like a full salmon, help get that down. Oh boy. Cassidy, that was tremendous. Always a lot of fun to uh, get get a, a, a back look at um, Pilot as our largest uh, Alaska Sea Life Center resident. Uh, so now we're going to start our awards program. And I first want to thank our awards committee, several of whom are going to be presenting today uh, for their time. And also thanks to the award sponsors, which we'll be recognizing uh, with each award. Um, our presenters today are either committee members, awards committee members, or our board chair. Uh, so the first award is the Hoffman Green Youth Award, and this award is sponsored by Dale Hoffman and is bestowed to an individual or team of Alaskan youth um, up to 19 years of age who have displayed a dedication to promoting the understanding and stewardship of Alaska's oceans. And to present the award today, I'd like to introduce Robert Sudam, Robert is an Alaska Sea Life Center board member. He is a senior wildlife biologist for the North Slope Borough, and he's also a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee. Robert. Thank you very much, Tara. Uh, hopefully you can hear me from far to the north. Okay, fantastic. Um, it is my pleasure to present this year's Youth Award. And the reason I'm presenting today, <clears throat> instead of Dale Hoffman, the founder of this award, is because Dale is exploring some remote uh, region of Belize. Um, it, potentially he is on, um, uh, and if he is, I'd especially like to say thank you, Dale, um, for his commitment to promoting the involvement of our youth in ocean conservation and also for his commitment to the Alaska Sea Life Center um, for many, many years. So thank you, Dale. 
Um, instead of me telling you about this year's Hoffman Green Ocean Youth Award recipient, Evan Kaner, um, we'd like to show you why he was selected this year. So please enjoy this video as published on Good Morning America's Facebook page. People would really like them because they are all from different animals in the Sea Life Channel. Thank you, Joanna, for showing that, that video. Um, I don't know if, if uh, we can get Evan's image up on, this, on the, uh, the Zoom session or not. There's Evan. There you are. Hey, Evan. My name is Robert, and I have not had the privilege of meeting you yet, but I look forward to meeting you in person in Anchorage or in Seward one of these days. But you're an incredible individual, and I don't know if you Thanks. know, but we changed um, because of you. Um, we've changed how this youth award was developed. It used to be for for people that were 12 to 19, but because you are such an incredible person, we decided to lower the age so that you could win this year's award because of the extraordinary things that you have done for the Sea Life Center and for ocean conservation. So thank you very, very much, Evan, and congratulations for winning this year's uh, Hoffman Green Ocean Youth Award. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say anything, uh, anything more, Evan? Yes, yes, I would. It's all yours. Thank you so much for the nominations and this award. This is a pretty cool award. It looks like water. And thank you for all who donated to the Sea Life Center and kept it open. That's it. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Evan, can we see your award? Can you hold it up? Um, I think we need to change my thing. We'll see. I don't think I think they can see it. I'll hold it up there. Perfect. There it is. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> so, Evan, congratulations again. Um, but there's somebody else who wanted to say, <laughs> excuse me, there's somebody else who wanted to say congratulations to you too. So please take a look at this. Hey there, Evan Kaner, Jeff Corwin here. So I want to thank you so very much for being an incredible environmental steward, for showing your love and your passion for Alaska's coastal resources 
by helping one of my most favorite places on the planet, which I've been to so many times, have told many, many stories over 20 years. Of course, we're talking about the Alaska Sea Life Center. This incredible organization that teaches people about marine ecosystems of Alaska and rescues wildlife and does amazing research gets to do what they do because of people just like you. Now, I know you're just a young man with great spirit and great ambition, but something tells me that someday this very organization that you help to protect and keep alive for the next generation, well, you may be working there someday. So congrats, thank you so much and keep up the great work. It's so exciting. It is so exciting. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations, Evan. Thanks for all that you did to help save the Alaska Sea Life Center this year, last year. Now, um, I, I, it's going to be hard to top that one, but um, we are going to continue with our next award. And this next award is the Marine Research Award. This award is sponsored by Drs. Clarence Potsky and Maureen McRae and is given to a scientist, a team of scientists, or an institution that is acknowledged by peers to have made an original breakthrough contribution or a career spanning achievement in any field of scientific knowledge about Alaskans' oceans. And to present this award, I'd like to introduce Lynn Polensky, who is the Executive Director of the North Pacific Research Board, a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee. And as she reminded me yesterday, we haven't actually met in person, but we have been on Zoom face to face many, many hours over the last year. So thank you, Lynn, for serving on the committee and for presenting this award. Oh, thank you, Tara. Thanks, everybody. Um, yes, and I am presenting award and award or to somebody who I haven't met either, but I know a lot about him as we work with them in our um, organization at the North Pacific Research Board. So, um, and unfortunately I don't have a great video, but I know Seth Danielson is in probably many videos, video clips and some great photos of researchers in the field working um, on all the great cutting edge research they do. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, tell you about his accomplishments. So Dr. Seth Danielson has a long history in Alaskan ocean science, starting as a graduate student and advancing through the academic systems, first as a technician, and based on his um, outstanding work, eventually he landed a faculty position. Over 25 years, Seth has built an outstanding network of collaborators, not only in the academic realm, but also in communities along the Alaskan coast and with the important industries and stakeholder groups. Seth has a unique way to make science understandable and fun. In a state where we are all so intimately connected to the ocean, it's an important skill to be able to communicate science findings in creative and respectful ways. His scientific achievements are also documented by a robust publication record in respected scientific journals and a successful record in receiving funding from various sources to support his research. In his more recent position as a tenure track faculty member, he has influenced and mentored a new generation of scientists at University of Alaska Fairbanks to advance cutting edge ocean science in Alaska. Seth has transformed the way we conduct and view ocean science in Alaska. One example is his work to install more ecosystem ecosystem observatories in the Chukchi Sea and the Gulf of Alaska, changing the way multidisciplinary ocean research is conducted. This type of monitoring was unprecedented and especially important to understanding annual dynamics in the seasonally inaccessible Arctic. This approach and technology have contributed much to the understanding of oceanographic and climate change, especially in the Arctic and has now been expanded to the Gulf of Alaska, where year-round sampling helps us to understand environmentally driven ecosystem processes that support highly valuable Alaskan fisheries. Also within the Gulf of Alaska, Seth has been instrumental in maintaining the near unprecedented long-term time series of GAK1 mooring, which also led to the involvement of other important research programs like the Gulf Watch Alaska long-term monitoring program. 
that's a long title of the program, and the prestigious North uh, Northern Gulf of Alaska Long-Term Ecological Research Program. Combined, Seth's efforts have played an instrumental role in significantly advancing marine science in Alaska and in the nation. So please help me in congratulating Dr. Seth Danielson on the 2021 Marine Research Award. <laughs> Congratulations, Seth. Oh, thank you so much, Lynn. So, like yeah, if, if I've got a moment to just say a couple words of thanks to everybody, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, yourself and the Sea Life Center, the awards review panel, and of course, Drs. Clarence Potsky and Maureen McRae for sponsoring this award. The recognition of this award is extremely rewarding, but I'd like to momentarily deflect attention and thank a number of other individuals and organizations who have contributed to the successes that I see this award as recognizing. Starting close to home, but beyond the family members that have tuned in here from Shabig Island, Maine, I need to thank everyone in my lab because what we are able to accomplish comes down to the fantastic team that I have the honor of leading. This includes Drs. Kate Hedstrom, modeling guru, and Tyler Hennon, data analyst supreme, and oceanography research professionals, Pete Shipton, who oversees moorings and the GAC-1 CTD sampling, Rachel Potter, who leads our high frequency radar current mapping efforts, Hank Statsiewicz, who oversees our glider and towed CTD programs, data wrangler, Liz Dobbins, and shop and field technician, Jordy Mesh. I'd also like to thank my many collaborator co-investigators, too many to list here beyond my longtime mentor, Dr. Tom Weingartner, and all of the funders who have had faith in our proposals, including especially the Alaska Ocean Observing System, the North Pacific Research Board, and the National Science Foundation, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, the National Park Service, and the MJ Murdoch Charitable Trust. People often tell me that I have one of the coolest jobs, and I, I really have to agree with them. I get to visit beautiful and remote places and discover new things about how the oceans near Alaska work, and then tell the world about what we are learning. I can't really fully express my gratitude for the recognition of this work other than to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Seth. Thanks, Yay. Seth. <laughs> well deserved. And um, I have the honor to serve on the board of the North Pacific Research Board and the Alaska Ocean Observing System. And, and Seth's name is a very common one that, that comes up with, within both of those as a, one of the, the best marine science researchers in the state. So congratulations, Seth. Thanks, Tara. So our next award uh, is the Marine Science Outreach Award. And this award is sponsored by the Alaska Ocean Observing System. Uh, the Marine Science Outreach Award is given to a person, team, or organization that has made an outstanding contribution to ocean literacy via formal or informal education, media, or other communications about Alaska's marine ecosystems. Um, and to present this award today, we have Molly McCammon, who is the award sponsor as the former executive director and current senior advisor for the Alaska Ocean Observing System. And she was also a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee. Thank you, Molly. Thanks, Tara, very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And I also wanna recognize uh, Shana Wisdom, who is my replacement as executive director at the Alaska Ocean Observing System. She's joining us today too, as part of this panel. Um, but it's uh, really a pleasure to present this award. Um, after retiring from over 40 years in education at the elementary, middle school, high school, and university levels, Barbara Bravelli Moon's passion for teaching and for Alaska's wildlife continues through her publishing company, Ocean Otter Publishing. Barbara has written six field guides for children and families about Alaska's animals, filling a niche previously unavailable to youth. So children have a unique opportunity to develop empathy for and understanding of many of Alaska animals through these information rich first person stories. By creating an opportunity for children to journal and draw their discoveries in the classroom as well as the field, a lasting impression is made that will impact future generations to care for animals and their environments. Barbara's passion, joy and excitement as well as her commitment to detail, accurate facts and knowledge and creativity are demonstrated throughout her books. 
Barbara's work is a valuable resource that engages and teaches children that they are connected to the world around them and that they can make a difference. Barbara's books expand conservation of Alaska's marine ecosystems to all children and their families and supplement reading, science, math, writing, and language arts curricula in many public, private, and homeschool settings. So please join me and help me in congratulating Barbara Bravelli Moon on the 2021 Marine Science Outreach Award. Thank you, Molly. Um, this is such an honor. Um, and it was such a surprise to get the, the call from Lynn. Thank you. And thank you to your boards um, for selecting me for this very esteemed um, honor. You know, when I first moved up here in 2004, a family friend came up to travel with me, Mikey. He was 12 years old. And as we traveled throughout the state, we saw amazing animals. We went to the Sea Life Center, went out on a, on a boat and and we kept seeing these wonderful whales and porpoises and dolphins. And Mike kept saying to me, I want to be able to keep track of what I'm seeing. And I want to read more. And I want to know where else they live. And I want to know how long they live. And Mike had this whole list of things that he wanted to know more about. And we started looking for books and just we couldn't find what Mike wanted. And so after he left, I kept his notes. He wrote down all kinds of notes for me. And I was still teaching, but after I retired in 2013, I, I thought, well, let's see what we can do with writing a book for Mike. It had originally been, was I intended just to do mammals, um, marine mammals and land mammals. And then it kind of started growing from there. And I never believed I'd have six books published and out in, in all over the United States, as well as Alaska and into foreign countries. But there's, there was really a need and there continues to be a need for um, information written so that children can connect with it easily. And so it's, it's so nice to have received this honor for the work I've been working on. On the last book, the Marine Invertebrate book, I especially want to think, this was a big undertaking for someone who is not a marine biologist. But I especially want to thank all of the staff at the Sea Life Center. You are also welcoming the summer that I lived down in Seward and wrote this book. I'd go to the Sea Life Center and I'd see, you know, um, Nancy would be there with a big hug and Tara would come by with a big smile as I was at the touch tank learning about the animals. Richard was there all the time. I had Richard on speed dial because I had question after question after question. Deb Magruder, who's a volunteer, um, she was my technical editor over the time that I was working on the book. Norman Neal, my regular editor, who's seen me through all six books. We had talked together, and she's a brilliant editor. And Amy Frackman, my tech guru, when my computer crashed in the middle of the book and I thought I'd lost everything, she came in and saved the day more than once. And just, you know, all of you at the Sea Life Center, whenever I'd come in, the whole staff, I'd go in to see my creature of the day and everybody was so welcoming. So I wanna thank you and thank all of you for the honor that you've given me. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> thank you, Barbara. Um, and and, and as, as Barbara said, she is uh, very well known to our staff and um, especially, you know, with the Richard on the invertebrates, I'm sure that he was able to fill you in on any bit of information you needed. But um, Barbara's books are lovely. I have several in my office and uh, they are, are wonderful for, for kids and even for adults in terms of getting to know Alaska's animals. So thank you, Barbara, and congratulations. Thank you. And I know a bunch of Barbara's friends are on here and just really appreciate that you all took the time to join us this evening. So our next award is the Stewardship and Sustainability Award. And this award is sponsored by Jason Bruni and is given to an industry initiative that demonstrates the highest commitment to sustainability of ocean resources. This year, the committee had a very tough choice and decided not to make a choice and to, to uh, select two worthy candidates to receive this award. Uh, to present both of these awards, please welcome Jason Bruni. Jason is the award sponsor and the Commissioner of the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation. He is also a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee. Jason. 
Thank you, Tara. Uh, I want to first of all say that Evan was an inspiration, and I'm still getting chills just from having watched him. I had Dale uh, on, uh, he's, he's in Belize right now, and I was FaceTiming him so he could watch it. And I have to just tell you, I am so excited! That will live in, in my heart forever. And I am so excited today to be able to acknowledge those companies that are doing it right in Alaska. Stewardship and sustainability of our oceans are so incredibly important. And today we have two amazing examples that really show how no one does it better than Alaskans do. And, and those two individuals, uh, uh, the companies Net Your Problem and Matson, we're going to recognize today. Uh, Net Your Problem is an environmental and renewable focused company who has found a sustainable solution for old fishing gear in Alaska and beyond. They work with fishing communities, recycler, recyclers, and sustainable brands to recycle end of life fishing gear and turn it into new products. By creating a cost competitive solution for disposing of used fishing gear, Net Your Problem has taken an important step in working to prevent marine debris in Alaska and reducing the waste burden on remote areas and island communities with limited options. Net Your, Problem, Net Your Problem's programs develop collaboration to provide an alternative responsible waste management solution that contributes to blue and circular economies. The dedication of this project to environmental sustainability serves Alaska well and demonstrates how change can take place to improve our options for ethical and sustainable waste management. Net Your Problem projects in Alaska have removed over 869,000 pounds of used net and fishing gear from the state, which they arranged to be recycled into new products, giving these nets a second life. Their expanding program also hopes to be able to recycle marine debris items, which will offer a non-landfill op non option for lost gear once it is collected on the beach. Please help me in congratulating Net Your Problem on the 2021 Stewardship and Sustainability Award. And accepting this award is Nicole Baker, founder of Net Your Problem. Congratulations, Nicole, and thank you for your leadership. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Um, and to the Sea Life Center for this award. I think we definitely don't do our work for recognition, but it feels nice um, as we work so hard to build new systems for managing fishing gear waste from scratch. A lot of what we're doing is uh, brand new in a lot of these communities. And um, since I have the floor, I'd, I'd like to say and take this time to highlight that both Matson and Net Your Problem are organized as for-profit businesses that incorporate sustainability into their business operations. I think a lot of times people think sustainability and doing the right thing for the environment is only things for nonprofits and volunteers. So I'd really like to consider um, everybody to be able to participate in this, businesses, nonprofits, and individuals alike. And so even though I'm not an Alaska resident, um, I'm talking to you guys from Seattle today, the state has definitely captured my heart over the five years that I worked there as an observer and the four years that we've been building Net Your Problem. And I cannot wait to return this summer, fingers crossed that our vaccination stuff goes well here in Washington. But I'm really looking forward to working with more fishermen and communities to collect more gear for recycling this summer. So really appreciate it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, Nicole, and congratulations again. Our second Stewardship and Sustainability Award is given to Matson. Serving Alaska since 1964, Matson specializes in carrying a wide range of commodities needed to support economies that rely on ocean transportation to continually replenish inventories and supplies. Matson vessels navigate some of the most pristine and environmentally sensitive areas in the world. Matson is committed to protecting these areas by operating in an environmentally responsible manner, focusing on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, improving air quality, recycling retired ships responsibly, recording zero significant spills, and protecting ocean health and biodiversity. Matson is a 2020 recipient of the North American Marine Environment Protection Association's Environmental Innovation mm -hmm. Award for the breadth and scope of its environmental program. Matson invests in innovative technology and fleet modernization 
and takes part in and supports ocean cleanups. In addition to their commitment to environmental stewardship, Matson partners with and donates to organizations like Alaskans for Litter Prevention and Recycling, or ELPAR. It participates in International Coastal Cleanup Day, and it made cash and in-kind contrib uh, contributions to more than 84 Alaska nonprofits in 2020. Rosalind Mitchell, the Alaska Sales Manager, currently sits and plays an active role on the Alaska Sea Life Center Board of Directors and is in attendance today in addition to Bal Dreyfus, Senior Vice President for Alaska. Please help me in congratulating Matson on the 2021 Stewardship and Sustainability Award and accepting this award is Bal Dreyfus, Senior Vice President for Alaska. Congratulations to you and all of your team at Matson. Commissioner Groom, uh, thank you for that very kind introduction. So I'm gonna turn it over to Roslyn. Actually, I'm just kidding. Um, very much appreciate your enthusiastic uh, introduction in the Alaska Sea Life Center for give, recognizing us. And I would tell you on behalf of all of our employees, not just here in Alaska, but uh, over 2000 throughout the company, uh, thank you. We take our responsibility uh, very seriously. We like taking our responsibilities seriously. Uh, and to recognize that we operate next month will be 139 years uh, in very pristine environments all over the world. And I think that uh, makes us really understand what we do has to be done responsibly. We like clean water. <laughs> we want clean, productive oceans. We like the clean air. We like the land that we live on and we take it all seriously to uh, protect that environment. So uh, very proud to receive this award on, on all of our employees around the world and particularly in Alaska and thank the Sea Life Center for uh, that recognition and, and to Rosalind for her service to the board. So thank you. You're muted, Tara. Ah, the first one to do that. You knew someone had to do it. <laughs> so yes, we really appreciate both of these organizations. Um, and as Nicole mentioned, having uh, for-profit organizations that are putting uh, stewardship of the oceans um, at the top of, of their priorities is what we're really looking to recognize in this award. And we really appreciate um, both Matson and Net's your problem uh, and how you uh, are looking out for especially Alaska oceans. So we have two, two more awards. Uh, the next award is the Ocean Ambassador Award. Um, and this award is only given on special occasions. It's not given every year. Uh, the award was created to recognize an individual or an organization that has made outstanding contributions in promoting public awareness and appreciation of Alaska's oceans, coasts, and marine ecosystems. Um, and as I said, it's not presented every year like, like the others. So to present this award, I'm proud to introduce Terry Lauk. He is the Alaska Sea Life Center uh, Chair of our Board of Directors, uh, and he'll be doing this award. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Tara. <clears throat> um, first of all, congratulations to uh, all the uh, prior winners. And um, I want to find a way to get uh, some Readersaurus art. So I'm going to try to hook up with Evan uh, later on. Congratulations, Evan. Um, it's hard to provide uh, a brief summary of the many achievements that led to the uh, selection of Admiral Tom Barrett for the Ocean Ambassador Award, but I'll try my best. Admiral Tom Barrett dedicated his career in service to the country and the state of Alaska, working to protect people, the environment, critical infra in, and critical infrastructure. He spent 35 years with the United States Coast Guard, including tours in Kodiak and Juneau, and had command of Alaska in the North Pacific before retiring as Vice Commandant in 2004. Tom then transitioned to work as the first U.S. Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administrator, overseeing safety and integrity of pipelines nationwide. He also served as the Deputy Secretary of Transportation under both President Bush and President Obama. After leaving Washington, D.C., Tom ran the Anchorage Office of the Alaska Natural Gas transportation projects as deputy federal coordinator. In 2011, Tom joined Alyeska Pipeline Service Company as its company president and served in that role for nine years, the longest tenure of any Alyeska CEO slash president. 
Under Tom's steady leadership, Alyeska won multiple accolades, including the Governor's Safety Award, the Alaska Ocean Leadership Stewardship and St Sustainability Award, and multiple Ethisphere Awards as one of the most, as one of the world's most ethical companies. Tom has fostered and demonstrated care and passion for the marine community and, and coastal Alaska. Through his Coast Guard leadership in Juneau and Kodiak, he built partnerships and connections across communities and government agencies to deliver safer and cleaner marine transportation. <clears throat> at, uh, at Alyeska, he kept employees along the 800 mile pipeline ever focused on safety and protecting the unique Alaska environment. Under his leadership, Alyeska brought in a fleet of purpose-built, state-of-the-art prevention and response vessels to escort tankers and better protect the waters of Prince William Sound. He spotlighted marine science and fostered partnerships with local experts at the Prince William Sound Science Center and the Alaska Sea Life Center. In his role as chair of the Alaska Marine Highway Reshaping Work Group, Tom worked on a plan to provide coastal communities with more reliable and sustainable ferry service long into the future. Tom ensured that the plan reflected the values of marine conservation and ocean stewardship. I'd be remiss if I did not also mention that Tom has been a valuable member of the Alaska Sea Life Center Board of Directors for more than nine years. Katrina Hoffman, president and CEO of the Prince William Sound Science Center says this of Tom, quote, when I think about the impact Tom Barrett has had in coastal communities and marine science oriented organizations in Alaska, specifically in the Prince William Sound region, the phrase Tom Barrett is everywhere comes to mind. I certainly hope that's not true anymore as he has earned and completely deserves to enjoy his retirement. But I know better than that. I know that he remains engaged in our state and I believe staying engaged is as fulfilling to him as it is beneficial to the organizations and causes he chooses to follow guide or support. I'm deeply grateful to know him and to have benefited from his wisdom and guidance. Tom Barrett has made Alaska a better place and has helped advance the fields of science research and education in myriad ways, often off the radar." Unquote. To close, Tom can often be heard quoting Vince Lombardi, quote, perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence, unquote. Though he says this to inspire others, he took this philosophy to heart. His career in public service reflected well. It is my honor to present the 2021 Ocean Ambassador Award to Admiral Tom Barrett. Congratulations, Tom. Uh, Barry, thanks so much. Uh, you know, uh, and, and thanks for your work uh, chairing the board. Um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, first of all, I wanna congratulate the other awardees. Uh, uh, every one of you. Uh, I'm just delighted and, and honored to be in such company uh, with uh, individuals and organizations that have such a passion and commitment uh, to protecting and uh, sustaining Alaska's oceans and the life uh, within them. It's amazing. And, and your work is amazing. Um, I do think, uh, having said that, there's someone missing from the awards, at least in my mind. And uh, it's... Uh, uh, Tara Reamer, if I was given an ocean uh, award, Alaska Ocean Leadership Award, uh, she'd be at the top of my list, along with other people like Katrina and your teams that do so much. And Tara, in your case specifically, um, it has been a bumpy road the last uh, few years, and you've uh, you've led a fantastic team. You've grown uh, the visibility and the work of your scientists and, and the education piece. So. I'm really honored to be able to work with you and your team as well. It really is impactful. You know, I, I wanna thank the, the nominees and, and the board. And, you know, I have a, a couple of a, a quick thoughts. Uh, you know, my career, I've, I've been blessed and, and I have a lot of gratitude, but I never did anything alone. You've heard that from other people. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we get by with, uh, with help from our friends in life. I've got my best friend here next to me, Sheila, uh, you know, who for over 50 years has been coaching me on how to behave. But, uh, you know, uh, but, but I, I mean that. I've always uh, felt strongly about and, 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 and have a lot of gratitude for the opportunity to work, work with such great people. So, so I'm grateful. I do want to close with a thought. You know, uh, there's a lot of work still to do. And uh, whether it's in Prince William Sound, where the Science Center is, and 
down with the Sea Life Center in general with businesses and, and the people who are out on the ocean uh, as part of their life here. Uh, Alaska's oceans have a reputation of being some of the, uh, the toughest on the planet and certainly at times they are, right? They, um, uh, they're, they're storm, storm cast, it's, it's a tough place to work, uh, right. but, but they're more, uh, they're more fragile than you think. Uh, the fact that an ocean is covered with ice doesn't mean it's not fragile. The fact that you've got, uh, you know, 70 foot seas in the Gulf of Alaska doesn't mean it's not fragile. And particularly for the, the marine life that inhabits it. So, so I think our work ahead of us is, is we have to do better. For the last couple of hundred years, the human race hasn't done a good enough job of the stewardship and conservation of the oceans and the life within them. So, uh, you know, I would just uh, want to say thanks for the, the acknowledgement. Um, I look forward to trying to continue that effort like all of you here do tonight, uh, but there's a lot of work to do um, if we're going to really uh, set a mark on uh, protecting, conserving, stewarding, and saving uh, the oceans of this planet that we all inhabit together. So thanks very much. I'm really honored, and I appreciate the thoughts behind that and, and the work all of you do to, uh, to make this a reality. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. And so lovely to have Sheila with you. I was also hoping to see Swivel Shot, but uh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I follow she's, Swivel Shot, the, the dog on Facebook. She's uh, down watching the Gonzaga game with our son, right? So we've got okay. three grandchildren who are Zags big time. <laughs> so that's, what, that's where that is. But th thank you, Tom. You're, you always provide the best counsel um, as a board member, and you've been a hugely valuable board member to me over the past number of years that I've served in this role and, and a wonderful advocate for Alaskans, oceans, and for the state. So thank you, Tom, so much. So now moving to the final award of the evening, the Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is sponsored by the late Governor Walter J. Hickel and the late Ermalee Hickel and is bestowed on an individual or institution that has made an exceptional contribution to management of Alaska's coastal and ocean resources over a period of 20 or more years. Uh, to present this award, please welcome back Robert Sudam, one of our awards committee members, uh, calling in from uh, as far north, probably the northernmost attendee on this Zoom tonight. Uh, Robert. I probably am the, the most northernmost attendee for sure, but, but thank you, Tara. Um, before I get into the more formal part of this award, I'd like to make a personal comment about this year's recipient. But don't worry, Doug, I'm going to say only nice things. Um, I've known Dr. Doug DeMaster for more than 30 years. Uh, he and I have been able to do field work together. Uh, attended numerous um, meetings around the world. Um, he was one of the key advisors on my PhD committee. Um, we've traveled together uh, personally, um, and he's been an inspiration and a mentor to me. Um, besides for his, his deep and broad knowledge about science and management, Doug is also one of the nicest people I, I know. Um, it is truly an honor to, of mine to be able to present him um, with this Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, but before we get to that point, um, I need to tell you a little bit more about, about Doug. Um, Doug has worked to promote stewardship of ocean and coastal resources his entire professional career. He has been a constant supporter of the scientists and students around him and he's given his support unconditionally and non-competitively. Over his career, he has mentored or helped with career advancements, many scientists, including me, um, that can currently uh, contribute to the management of marine resources in Alaska and across the US and indeed globally. Since completing his PhD in ecology and behavioral biology from the University of Minnesota in 1978, um, Doug has had a career spanning, spanning 40 years and he's gained um, recognition as a well-respected and well-published scientist, as well as a national and international leader 
administration administrator and teacher in conservation biology. Uh, Doug has been instrumental in revolutionizing um, the scientific basis for managing marine mammal and fisheries interactions in the United States and for helping to resolve conflicts between the, the Pollock fishery really in Alaska and the endangered stock of stellar sea lions. Um, Doug notably has, has served as the chair of the International Whaling Commission Scientific Committee and president of the Society for Marine Mammalogy. He's a past recipient of the Gold Medal Award, the highest award granted by the Secretary of Commerce. And he's also a University of Minnesota, has received the University of Minnesota's um, Outstanding Achievement uh, um, Award. Uh, Doug retired, well-deserved retirement uh, in June, 2018. Uh, after a distinguished career uh, with NOAA Fisheries, uh, notably as the uh, director of the Alaska Fisheries Science Center for 17 of those years. Understanding the research needs of Alaska's federal fisheries, protected resources, and habitat, uh, Doug has spent his career delivering sound science for informed management um, in Alaska and in the Arctic and, and again across the globe. And he's done this all with good humor, humility, and kindness. With that, I'm exceedingly honored and happy to present the Walter J. and Irma Lee Hickels Lifetime Achievement Award to, Doc, to Dr. Doug DeMaster. Congratulations, Doug. Well, this is what it looks like. Th thank you, Robert. Um, as you said, for over 30 years, you've been uh, a partner in my efforts and I want to thank you and and all the people on the nomination committee I, I really do appreciate this uh, as you said one of my primary jobs for the last 17 years when I was a center director was to try and get resources from NIMPS headquarters to Alaska uh, I, I've been told indirectly that my uh, Dr. Bob Foy who replaced me as the new center director is on a on a particularly assertive day I believe I uh, was trying to get resources for Alaska and the uh, NIMS chief scientist kind of shook his head and kind of harumphed and said, damn, you sound just like the master. <laughs> well, I, I take that as a great compliment. Uh, I, I really did work hard to try to get resources to a, a state and a research community that I loved. I also, I want to thank specifically the board at the Alaska Fishery Science Center, Lori Budville, um, Steve Ignell, Jeremy Russ, and a whole cast of people that I, they were my, my partners. I couldn't have done what, what we, what we did at the Alaska Fishery Science Center without their support and help. I also want to thank the North Pacific Fishery Management Council and the, um, Alaska Regional Office. Um, they were great partners. Uh, I want to especially thank Jim Balziger. Jim has been my, my rock in terms of stewardship. Uh, we certainly couldn't have done our apl applied research that we did without his support. Uh, he was instrumental in helping us uh, convince NIMPS that uh, Alaska uh, should get at least its sh fair share of the resources in terms of ship time and, and, and other resources. Uh, finally, in terms of stewardship, I've, I've spent a lot of time uh, maybe my last 30 years concentrating working on the Arctic and, and the Arctic is a special place for me and because of friendships and, and years of research up there, I, uh, I learned a lot from the community, the hunters, my relationship with the Alaska Native organizations changed the way I, I, I kind of perceived what the priorities were and what the needs were. And, uh, uh for that, I'll always be uh, a better person. Uh, that that experience with the local communities and and the hunters and traditional knowledge uh, changed the way I pro approached research. So, I want to give them a big shout out as well. So, uh, for all the people that were involved, um, as Tom said, you don't do this alone. Uh, I certainly didn't, but uh, I sure created a lot of friendships along the way. I don't regret a single one. Thank you. 
Congratulations, Doug, and thank you very, very much um, for, for all that you've given to Alaska and to ocean conservation and uh, co-management. Yes, thank you, Doug, and thank you, Robert. Um, when I got into the field of marine science, when I started at the Alaska Sea Life Center in 2003, it didn't take long for me to learn Doug's name. Um, and he was definitely viewed as a mentor among all the scientists that I was working with. And I never knew that he actually was one of your mentors as well, Robert, but uh, Doug has been uh, responsible for, for mentoring a large number of the marine scientists that are, that are working in our state right now. Congratulations. So again, congratulations to all of our winners uh, and thank you to all of the sponsors. Uh, we couldn't do this with, without our sponsors um, and just amazing that this is our 12th year of doing these awards and the committee is just always amazed at the, the wonderful um, qualified uh, nominations that come to us. So uh, congratulations again to the winners. You are all very deserving of all these um, be, for, for these awards from for your care of Alaskans oceans and your efforts um, for uh, Alaska ocean sustainability. Um, as I mentioned early on, um, we did record this program um, and we will be having this available for you to share with your friends, uh, family, uh, colleagues that weren't able to attend today. Uh, so uh, definitely look for that over the next few days, probably by the end of the week. Uh, but really a huge thank you uh, to everyone who joined us uh, for the presentation today and everyone helped pull this together. And of course, a final congratulations and let's just do a final round of applause uh, for all of our award winners. Thank you so much. And uh, this concludes our award ceremony uh, from today. And um, definitely, if I want to let everyone know that this is an annual process and we will be opening the awards again next winter uh, for the next round. But congratulations to the 2021 Alaska Ocean Leadership Award winners. And have a good evening.